New York's classic rock, Q1043. Live at 5 at Q104.3. It's so great to have musicians coming back in where live is really live. Well, welcoming back to New York City. Like rolling into New York City. Billy Payne from Little Feet. Thank you so much for coming oh, yeah, back. A pleasure, Ken. We were rolling in this morning. Uh, <laughs> it's smiling gonna... in the morning light. You know, <laughs> kind of thing. It's good to be here. Feets don't fail me now. And exactly. Little Feet, you were doing... You know, every time there's a date, every time there's a marker for something, it kind of hits me and you go, oh, the 45th anniversary of one of the greatest albums, live albums ever made waiting for Columbus. My God, I, be, especially in the, in the pandemic time in the last two years, yeah. the things I went back to are like things that are soothing. Like we talk about comfort food. Yeah. Comfort music is just putting on waiting for Columbus because it is, I, it is the happiest music. It is the most joyous, pure sound you could record. It was just so beautifully done. Well, well said. I, I was talking to the audience of a couple of shows ago and was talking about exactly that, the joy mm -hmm. of playing this music. And particularly with playing with this group of people, um, you know, it's just uh, those, those things you, you, you can script to a certain degree, but when they work, that's when you know you're really on to something. When, when, and when people give you the response that you would Perhaps it predicted, and you can't predict anything in this world, but there's times when, when, when the gods align, and that's where we are with Little Feet right now. It's an amazing band. I mean, on one hand, it's weird to think of you and that I'm not going to see Paul Barrere and we're not going to have lunch. I mean, Paul's been a friend like you for all this time, but there's an, a doubt in my mind you want the band to keep going, that you and Kenny and the guys, it's a, it's a brand... And not just for us who love it, but to introduce this music to a whole new generation. Yeah, you know, and I, we we thought I thought long and hard about that before we we put it back out in front of people. It was the same thing we we were confronted with with Let It Roll. Uh, yeah, you've got a legacy, you've got, but where's Lowell? You know that that kind of thing. So do you have the cojones to to actually put it in front of people? And if you do, what are your reasons for doing so? And it's one thing to have a legacy, but are you going to build upon it? And is that that's that's something that you want to take people on that to show literally why when Lowell and I got together in 1969 and we discussed what the future of Little Feet was at that time, to connect with other musicians, we weren't going to be a household name that we knew of, and we're, and we're not, but to connect with other musicians and to have a flexibility within the group itself to if we needed to bring something in, that we would do so. If it were horns, not a keyboard player, whatever the heck it was, we'd have that flexibility. But at the center of everything, Ken, uh, is the music itself. And that's what holds, the, that's the thread to everything. So that was kind of the mission statement for you and Lowell, is just to explore. Yeah. Make it an explorative band as opposed to let's write some hits and you know it's a different era too. You guys have to remember the goal in that in that time, the Grateful Dead are the most unlikely hit band that ever <laughs> existed. They went out of their way to do everything that the music business says was wrong, right. but they played from the heart, like what Little Feet was. Do you know? I just researched this. Wednesday is Lowell's birthday. Is it really? Oh no, Billy. I mean, that's cool. It's it's really cool, but it's. It's, it's also like, like uh, huh? it's just yeah yeah exactly. <laughs> I don't have I don't have anything smart uh, to say. Like wow. well, listen, and as you're talking, Ken, over your left shoulder uh -huh. is the Doobie Brothers, an album I played <laughs> on. What were once vices were are now habits. I was working with the Doobie Brothers for the last seven years, maybe six, but let's call it seven. And in October of last year, uh, 2021, I said, "Look, um, I'm not going to be able to play with you guys any longer on the road because I'm." Little Feet is back together, and uh, i got to devote 100% to that. And they said, well, when you signed up with, with Ken Levitan at Vector in Nashville, we kind of felt uh, our days with you were going to be numbered. But we, <laughs> we remained good, good friends, but it was just funny seeing that record. I think that had China Grove on it, maybe... <laughs> I don't remember uh, what those, song. Uh, great uh, Blackwater, uh, Patrick Simmons yeah. hit was on that, and Another Lonely Park, Another Sunday that I love. I love that tune. Billy Payne, Little Feet, live at the Beacon Theater, recreating the perfect live album, Waiting for Columbus. Um, we got a nice little electric piano here. Yeah. 
I uh, feel like jumping on and playing a little something for us. Yeah, I'm going to play you. Um, yeah, sort Billy of Payne an... is going to play not only Little Feet, but he's going to play the Rock Three. He's going to play the Rachmaninoff Piano yeah. Concerto. Oh wait. Oh. <laughs> That's the short version. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Maestro, come here. <laughs> um, you know, I, I grew up playing classical music. Um, Did you? Yeah, I, I studied, and I'm not real good at it, but I I, I still use it. Uh, my teacher said, look, to my mother, when I was probably six or seven years old, she goes, um, I'm going to make sure Bill knows how to read music, but let's not take the magic out of it for him. That's beautiful. What so, a gift. That, now, that's a real gift. It is. And uh, without it, I probably wouldn't have played because it's... Um, Classical music's difficult, difficult, difficult to uh, to get into, but uh, but yeah, when you're just sitting around goofing off at home, going, <laughs> yeah, playing Davy Crockett theme, that kind of stuff. So, by the way, you, Billy mentioned the Doobie Brothers before the album yes. before me. You did this for me. This was many moons ago. If you don't mind me mentioning that, China Grove, the big <laughs> song, came from Billy. From right from, uh, I still remember the story. It was like a thing you used to audition with, or you played in school. Yeah, like I used to do this sort of China. I get a standing ovation and stuff. I played this this lick on on the Doobies record, and the the, the lick was. And I did it, not a joke, but sort of, I, it was the 10th song of the day, and I was a little tired, and I think, ah, <laughs> oh, what the heck. And I go, can I redo this lick? And they go, no, no, Billy, we love it. I said, no, I was kind of goofing around. <laughs> so I went, and, I went and told them that story. Hey, as a kid, probably fourth and fifth grade, I'd play this little Chinese song and um, get a standing ovation going to the keyboard, coming back from the keyboard. I'd go out in the playground, get beat up like everybody else. <laughs> so Tommy Johnson calls me 22 years later. He goes, not like, hello, or how you doing, Bill? He goes, you remember that lick you didn't like? I go, yeah, Tom, what about it? He goes, was the result of that story you told and the lick that you played, I went home that night and called that song China Grove. <laughs> I go, where's my publishing? <laughs> so, and the check is to follow, or is this the just a thank you? The check is still in the mail. I keep looking every <laughs> every weekend. Mr. Johnson, if you're listening right now, uh, Mr. Payne would like to see when that check is coming. Thank you very much. We love you all, but anytime you want to get $10 that. $10 would be fine. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> hey, so play us a little, uh, wait, something from Waiting for Columbus, okay, if you this will. Okay, this is a song I wrote as a child. Uh, well, not that much of a child, but it's about a city, and it's uh, called Oh, Atlanta. And I'm going to do it kind of in a New Orleans style, at least to start with. They got a place down Kentucky, right down near Ohio. You can watch it play tonight. People line up to watch it fight. I said, I'm watching them play. I wish I was a one. I said, here thinking about a crazy scene. If I could only be there tonight. Whoa, Atlanta. Whoa, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah, Atlanta. I got to get back to you. Drop me off on Petrie I got to feel that Georgia sun The women down in Atlanta They make it all flick that So they bump and run, yeah I said I'm watching them play I wish I was home on it I sit here thinking about a crazy little girl If I could only see her tonight Whoa, Atlanta Whoa, Atlanta Yeah, 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 Atlanta I got to get back at you We make it down It's to you and me Where the music plays all night 
They got this boogie band boy and it's bound for hell And when they get to moving they'll never stop they Keep on playing that down home beat they Keep on let down I wish I was old one I'm sitting here thinking about that crazy girl If I can only be there tonight Whoa, Atlanta Whoa, Atlanta I said, yeah, yeah, Atlanta I got to get back to you I got to get back to you Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Am I awake yet or <laughs> God I, I am we are now. That was just, now. that was gorgeous. Thanks, that man. That was gorgeous. That's what I talk about when we were saying before. The pure joy of this music coming through is absolutely amazing. There's just such happiness to it. Can't wait to hear you guys knock it out. And um something I said to Billy before, I was hosting the show at the Capitol Theater in the fall, Love Rocks, about getting out the vote. And everybody's there. Lisa Fisher and Jackson Brown and yes. Yorma came out and they did White Rabbit. And there's this drummer who's playing <laughs> every style of music, but perfectly. He's playing Hendrix. He's playing. He's playing with uh, Larry Campbell. He's playing yes. anything. And I said to him, "Excuse me, I, I'm an amateur drummer. I'm all because you're not just playing. You have to play every different style of famous drumming. And you nailed every song. What's your name?" And he said, oh, "My name's Tony Leone." I said, so what are you doing these days? He said, oh, I'm going out with Little Feet. And I went, Billy Payne's really lucky. You guys, no got, you guys got an amazing drummer. This guy, I mean. Well, he's in the band, too. I mean, I, he's not I love just going Fred. out with us. He's in our group. Got a Fred Tackett, Richie Hayward. You know, he, they, he was Richie was terrific. It was a sound. But this guy is, I'm telling you, I, I, I had to ask him, like, tell me about yourself. It, was, it blew me away. Yeah, he's, he's, I'd seen him working with Larry a few times. Uh, down in Jamaica as well, where we do our little soiree every year. I think we're, we might do one last one, which would be next year. And uh, But, yeah, that's where I, I really kind of was honing in on what Tony did. He also used to, used to hold the top, one of the top jazz seats here in the city in, in, in Manhattan. So he's got all these different styles. And... Uh, we're turning him loose with things. And he also sings. He yeah. sings some Paul Pereira songs. I go, I didn't know you could sing. So the discovery is, is right there. Scott Sherrard, who's also a new member, I met him when I was touring with the Doobies. He was the musical director for Greg Allman. Um, so we've got those two guys. We've got Fred Tackett, uh, Kenny Grady, Sam Clayton. Kenny and Sam came to us in 1972. They were the new kids. They're the new kids, and they were from, uh, gosh, what is it, uh, Delaney and Bonnie, right? Oh, right. I forgot. Yes. So they their their pedigree was 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 well intact. Fred Tackett, um, he reminded me, I've been living in Los Angeles for 55 years. I saw you from Arkansas, Fred, Fred Tackett. He, <laughs> uh, he got us our first paying gig with... At a Jimmy Webb birthday party out over in Encino, <laughs> who we worked with for a long time. But there's also on our uh, Dixie Chicken album, there's a song called Fool Yourself, which is a beautiful tune. Yeah. And he wrote it. So uh, uh, Fred's just been this fixture in my life since uh, 1969 when I came to Los Angeles. And, it, uh, it's amazing to have such long lasting friends and a musical conversation to go that long yeah. with someone on stage and off. Billy Payne, we get Little Feet, Waiting for Columbus, redoing this live album in its entirety, and more, and special guests. You know what? You're sitting there. How about, can I steal one more from you? How about something else on that on that fine piano? Let's see. Yes, we, uh... There's a lady in a turban. Ha ah, yes. In a cocaine tree. And she does a dance so rhythmically. She's a crying and a singing and having a time. And don't 
that cocaine free look fine Put on your sailing shoes Put on your sailing shoes Everyone will they parade when you put on your sailing Doctor, doctor, you know I feel so bad. This is the worst day I ever had. What well, have you this misery for a very long time? But if you hip, I'll lay it on the line. But you gotta put on your sailing shoes. Put on your sailing shoes. Everyone will start to cheer when you put on your sailing Put on your sailing Sail on. Sail on, sail on What on a sail It's you Awesome Cool, man Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing else you want to do than get to the Beacon Theater, put on your sailing shoes. That's absolutely true. And we, we do it with love. And um, there's some great... Uh, Steve Fallon's uh, one of the guys that's doing the honors with um, lights and with projections. There's a really cool thing in, um, that we show during Time Loves a Hero. Because I mentioned our, our lost brethren, Paul, yeah. Richie, uh, Richie Hayward, Paul Barrer, Lowell George. Uh, this legacy continues because of our fans. Uh, they allow us to do it. If they don't co-sign us, uh, there's your answer. Exactly. Put, put it in the closet and leave it there, you know. But this thing is, is, a, is a growing entity. And uh, uh, a few years ago, I, I probably would not have saluted the, the notion of going out and playing Waiting for Columbus. But during the pandemic, of which we're still unfortunately feeling the, the pressures of all that, um, but but the, the water's actually fine, a, a lot finer than it's been. So I, I encourage people to get out there uh, in whatever way you feel the most comfortable with or without masks. But but come on down. This is, it is a joyous affair. It, we, we need, music is more important than ever. Absolutely. It's the communal thing. You don't ask the person next to you what they think of politics. When yeah, you're who cares? Singing, when, you're, when you're singing music you love and enjoying, that's when the joy of your soul comes out. And that's the thing why I think we've been at each other's throats for two years. Yeah. We weren't going to ball games. We're not going to yeah. concerts. The, the, our releases, those are our pressure valves that release us from all that. That's absolutely right, Ken. <laughs> so it's a pleasure and a Always privilege enjoy. to be doing this again. And uh, awesome. It's great having this conversation with you, my friend. I know. I missed it so. New York's Classic Rock. Q1043.